Uh, welcome everybody, and I apologize uh, profusely for the, uh, the glitch um, on the sound, but we do have to have this um, meeting recorded. Um, so um, uh, this is the uh, August 13th, 2019 City of Columbia Board of Zoning Appeals. My name is Chuck Sally, and I serve as chair of the board. And um, I'd also like to introduce the other board members uh, here today. So to my left is uh, Jean Deacons, and then my re immediate right is Jenna Stevens, and uh, next to Jenna is Marcellus Primus. Um, I would also like to introduce the staff that will be assisting uh, us today at the table. Um, Rachel uh, Bailey, the zoning administrator, Hope Hasty, the deputy zoning administrator, Andrea Wolf, and Erica Hyen. The board is charged with hearing applications for special exceptions, variances, and administrative appeals. All testimony is recorded for the record and anyone wishing to speak will need to be sworn in and come to the podium to speak. No testimony may be taken from the floor. When you come to the podium, state your name and please speak clearly into the microphone because this meeting is being recorded. Applicants with cases before the board are allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes. This time also includes all persons presenting information on half of the applicant. Uh, this time limit does not include any questions asked by the board or staff regarding the case. Any member of the public may address the board in intervals of three minutes or five minutes if, by, if a spokesperson for established body of three or more. The applicant then has five minutes for rebuttal. The board reserves the right to amend these time limits on a case-by-case -case basis. Those of you who plan to uh, speak, you must be sworn in. So if you are here as an applicant or here to speak in any case, please stand up at this time and raise your right hand. Do you affirm or attest that the testimony you will give today yes, is the truth and nothing but the truth? At this time, I'll turn the uh, meeting over to Ms. Bailey. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for your patience. So the board uses the consent agenda to approve non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion and vote. If a member of the board or the general public wishes to discuss an item that's on the consent agenda, that item is removed and considered during the meeting. The board then approves the remaining consent agenda items. The consent agenda today consists of the approval of the July 9th, 2019 minutes. Item number two, case 2019-0040 for 22, 225 Sloan Street for variance to the maximum lot coverage requirement for a single family residence. Item number three, case 2019-0041 for 2534 Wheat Street, variance to the accessory building setback requirement for a detached carport. Item number four, case 2019-0042 for 700 Gervais Street, variance to the maximum height requirement for a proposed hotel. Item number five, case 2019-0043 for 3818 River Drive, is variance to the maximum height requirement for a wall in the front and side yard setbacks. Item number six, case 2019-0044 for 314 South Edisto Avenue, variance to the front and side yard setbacks for an addition. And item number seven, case 2019-0048 for 2200 Hampton Street, a special exception to permit an alternative parking surface. That is all on consent agenda today. Okay, um, we're about to vote on these items. Is, is, um, before we do, is there anybody on the board or in the audience that would like any of these items removed from the consent, ag uh, consent agenda? I see none. Um, I would like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda um, subject to all stipulations and comments of the applications by staff. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The agenda is passed. We'll give one minute for everyone to excuse themselves. All right, we'll proceed with the regular agenda. 
The first item is number nine, case 2019-0034 for 2823 Columbia Avenue. This is a special exception to change a non-conforming use within a design preservation district. As this is not a request that comes before the board very often, I'll give a little bit of background. Um, within a design preservation district, instead of the 12 month restriction with non-conformity, they have 36 months. Um, if it's vacant for longer than that, they lose that status. But if they request this within the 36 month period, which the applicants are kind of right at that point, um, they can come before the board and suggest an alternative non-conforming use that is more in line with the district. So if the board finds that it's more in line than the original quadruplex, as in this case, they can decide as they see fit. So this is an existing quadruplex. They're suggesting and requesting to go down to a triplex. And why are they approaching the 36 month variance? It's been vacant. It's um, with a non-conformity in usual districts, you can, if it's vacant or abandoned for 12 months or more, they lose that status. Design preservation gives them 36 months. So it's the vacancy that's been there. Got it. Please, please do not um, speak from the, um, uh, uh, the floor. You'll have to come to the podium to speak and first the uh, applicant will speak first. The Thank applicant you. can come forward and then if anyone in the public wishes to speak, they can speak after the applicant. Good morning. morning. Terry Shepper. Speak now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm Terry Shepper, and Columbia Avenue has been in our family for about 45 years. John's mother, Jessie Lee, owned it, and it operated as a quadruplex for the entire um, 37 years. When Ms. Shepper um, developed Alzheimer's, it turned over to their oldest sister, Linda, and from that time until now, it has been in really bad repair not being taken care of. Um, there were tenants in it up until 35 months ago, so it was occupied up until the 35th month. And we took it over um, a couple years ago, and one of Ms. Shepard's wishes was that, you know, the folks that were there to not be asked to move because all three of them were in very bad physical condition. There was one gentleman in a wheelchair, no legs, colostomy bag, and she just, you know, so until she passed, we tried our best to honor that. Um, it has been a while. We've had possession of the property for a couple of years, and I have all my receipts. We have been paying out of pocket. To date, we've spent about 70000 total on the renovations. There's still a long way to go. We've, since this all happened, we've secured a line of credit to finish the repairs. We feel like we can be finished by December or January. It operated as a quadruplex for the four years, so for the you know 40 plus years, so we're asking because it would be non-conforming, I guess, to go back to the quadruplex. So we're asking to step it down to a triplex so that we can finish it. And it would be devastating to us financially to not have it operate as a quadruplex for what we paid for it from the family estate and what we've put in it so far. We're almost there. It, there was just so many dollars in repairs to do. Very good. And are you familiar with the criteria that you filled out um, when you, um, would you mind just going through those real quickly? Okay, sir. Yeah, so the first one was just a request to change it from a quadruplex to a triplex and um, that we feel like that that would, um, you know, reduce cars there for parking reasons. There's plenty of parking on the side and on the front, but it would limit some of that. Um, it, it has been operated as a quadruplex, so we're proposing for it to go from four to three, um, you know, which would afford nicer units on the inside. Um, but the number of occupants would go down then, so then you'd just be running three units instead of four. Um, it was grandfathered in and operated like it was, and we have you know, stated that. Um, we want to restore the property to its original look. My husband is a licensed builder. We build about 10 homes a year on and around Lake Murray, so we appreciate the architecture of it. We don't want to change it. Um, we've had special wood milled for some of the replacements. We've um, and that's why some of these materials cost so much. There's still a long way to go, but we've done a lot since we've had possession of it. Um, and, um, and we continue, you know, we'll continue. So I, I have our, our records here where since we've had possession, 
it is not set completely stagnant for more than a few weeks at a time. We use this project as fill-in work, so there's been a continuous stream of people there doing work. Um, it's just, you know, we'll get a few extra thousand and go say, go fix that. We'll get a few extra thousand and say, go fix that. We've just been trying to do it out of pocket, but um, maybe that wasn't the right way to handle it. Kind of like the cobbler's children doesn't have any shoes. Yeah, yeah. But we, we appreciate the area. We appreciate what's going on in the area. One of the problems that we had, of course, was obtaining a loan because there were no comparables to, to support it, to be able to get a loan. So that's why we've been doing it out of pocket. But so I, I'm assuming that two of these, uh, or one or two of these units are going to become larger. Um, yes. Is that the yes. plan? Yes. Gotcha. Not necessarily for more people, just a little bit larger for a, a better sized unit. So, you know, some of these are considered studios, but now they'll be a true one bedroom. Gotcha. Okay. Um, thank you very much for your testimonies. Anyone here uh, speak in favor or against this application? Please come to the podium and, and state your name. I'm sorry about the outburst. I'm Felicia Brown, and I stay at 2827 Columbia Avenue next to that property. And I've been there for a little over 20 years. And uh, when I first moved there, Miss Shepard took really good care of the property and there were good tenants there and it was a good property to live next to but over the years it's it's gone downhill it's been dilapidated it's they patch it up the, the tenants move they, they they're in and out it's not it's not a good property i feel like it lowers the value of my property and it's been empty for like she said 35 months and they they patch on it for a, a, a couple weeks and then it'll be empty for months and, and vagrants have broken in and uh, and I've complained to the city and because they've been living in there and they come and lock it up and this has been going on for a while and I just don't feel like it's going to get fixed up like it's supposed to be fixed up and that, that you know that it's going to be what it's supposed to be so I'm against the multifamily dwelling being continued. Understood. Is there anyone else here? Speak on that. Would you approach the podium again, please? please. And I do want to add that this is within a design preservation district, so the exterior work and the changes will be in accordance to those historic guidelines. Right. So those requirements are. Do you um, you want to um, rebut yes, sir, I'd rebut that? Or, yes, sir. Um, I appreciate what she's saying. I mean, there is no doubt about it. I I don't disagree with her. Um, all I can do is commit to move quicker, and that's what we'll do is we'll commit to move quicker. Since this has happened, we've secured some additional money to finish it, and we'll finish it, and it'll be a nice property. How long do you think that's going to take? Uh, I, John and I talked about it this morning. I mean, we. Um, I mean, December would be aggressive, um, but if we had a timeline and we said we had to do it by December, we could. The, the, the roof leaks on the interior of the home literally rotted out the interior, the whole interior. So um, he's had an engineer there for load issues. It's just been a slow process. Um, but wait, we will commit, I, I understand what she's saying, and we will commit to putting the property back in a good condition. Um, What's the timing on this if we give her um, this, the uh, requested exception? It is up to the board has the ability to set put safeguards in place. Okay. So um, I also just want to note there are some code enforcement. Um, they've been out a few times on this property. I think they are working with applicants on rectifying some of those issues. So those are in works as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they're that they set on their well, and, and we're very familiar with the codes because my husband is a builder, which is what stops some of the project as you're moving forward. You go, well, if we fix that, then we have to fix that. And if we fix that, we have to bring that into code and staircases and things like that that we just had to bring into compliance because, of course, he wouldn't have it any other way. But um, it just became a much bigger project than we originally. Planned. Sounds like that y'all could you've got the capabilities mm -hmm. to do this. Um, it's just a matter of carving out the time and energy and money to do it, right? 
So um, if we uh, if we gave you this exception, um, uh, provided that you completed the construction by the end of this calendar year, would that be um, acceptable? It would make it happen, yes, sir. Are, are any of the changes to the exterior footprint, or is everything interior as well? Most of it's interior. There's some exterior. The the, the staircase so, that was rotten, the staircase that was rotten. Of course, you had to remove the exterior to get to it. It's just the way the construction of the building was. So, but that material is replaceable and it can be milled and, and made to be exactly like it was originally. Mm -hmm. Do you have an architect involved with this project? No, um, we are, I'm a designer. My husband is a licensed contractor. We've built homes for 28 years. So we are capable. We draw our own plans now. We have um, uh, design folks that work with us, but we ultimately give the, it, it's more of an on-site type project. I guess the reason I asked the question, I think it would have been helpful if we, we had some of those plans or renderings to look at mm -hmm. and understand what you're trying to do, but I really don't have a feel for the details of the project. Not necessarily a deal breaker, just would have been helpful. Right. I mean, I, I do have a list of the scope of work to be continued. I don't know if that'll help or not, but I have that. I guess it's just, it, it probably would help if you could just give us just a 30 second um, brief overview of the key, key highlights of what you've done and what you have okay. left to that, do, I that, that, that would be helpful. Uh, um, I also just want to note when you're, if you are setting a construction timeline, keep in mind if they have to go to DDRC or anything, that could cause some delays just depending on when they get in that application monthly and <coughs> if the board makes a decision right away, because sometimes DDRC can take Understood. All right. He doesn't hear very well, and he probably didn't hear what you said back there. So he's saying he wants to know what, what's been completed and what still needed to be done. Okay. It's John uh, Shepard. Oh, thank you. Uh, we've, uh, we've replaced the roof and uh, structural repairs to the roof. All the windows and doors have been replaced. Uh, we've done some minor interior repairs to the plumbing and some minor in exterior repairs to the siding. However, in lieu of what what we run into, um, you know, you pull a section of wall off, it'd be rotten. And, and uh, so what needs to be done is the electrical, plumbing, heat and air, all upgraded to code. And that includes, you know, fire rate sheet rock on the whole nine yards. So um, when we got into this thing, when I pulled the first permit, it was, that the idea was about 35, 40,000 to, to do minor repairs. Uh, but my mother and them didn't, take as good a care of it. And so um, we pull a section off and it was just beyond patchy, you know. So uh, if anybody that knows me and knows all the property, I, mean, I don't own slum lords and I don't own slum places. So, you know, when I'm a part of whatever I'm a part, it's done to the T. So to answer your question on that, there's still quite a bit of work to do. Four months is, is formidable to get it done. But if it's going to be done right, it's going to need electrical plumbing heat and air. The outsides, you know, my wife and both my mother would want it maintained to look like it originally looked. So, uh, so that requires some special people to come in and do that. Which we have access to that. Um, so anyway, that, that's what's to be done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any um, questions or discussion from the board? Sure, there's a whole lot of other options. I don't know if economically it's going to be feasible to turn it back into a single family dwelling at this, at this time. It seems to me going from a quadruplex non conforming use to a triplex is better. So, I think it's a reasonable plan for sure. Yes. Uh, our choice is whether or not. Um, I think that, yeah. It. I think the big issue is to make sure that it gets completed um, um, in a in a commercially reasonable time period. Um, and I understand that approvals uh, make that um, requirements make that uh, somewhat difficult. So I'd like to um, make a motion um, 
that we approve this um, uh, application um, uh, for a special exception um, to change the non-conforming use within a design preservation district uh, conditioned on the um, uh, owner uh, and applicant uh, you know, uh, using commercially reasonable efforts to complete this project by the end of the calendar year 2019 subject to uh, delays caused by um, uh, uh, waiting on approvals from the DDRC. Um, and I um, uh, would also add that um, the zoning administrator would be um, uh, the arbitrator and of that um, what is reasonable uh, for the delays in in, uh, in those permits um, and subject to all other stipulations and comments of staff in the application second we have a motion and a second all in favor say aye aye all opposed motion carries Item on the regular agenda is item number 10, case 2019-0045 for 314 South Edisto Avenue. Um, it's a variance to the maximum lot coverage requirement for an addition. So the applicant's here and is welcome to come forward. My name is Sam Atuma, and we live on 314 South Edisto. We currently own the home there. We're trying to comply with the, uh, we're adding to the house, and we want to keep the uh, line of the home, and shrink it in or out. So that's the first item on the agenda that was approved. But also, we're trying to add to the home, and we are asking, with the current plan is, that we asked for, it's 39.6%. Uh, occupy of the lot and the allotment is 40 percent so we're asking for 39 i mean the, the, the current plan is 39.6 however we're asking for three percent more just in case we want to add something here and there with construction to make it 42 percent so to be clear you're asking for a special exception to exceed the minimum lot coverage by two percent yes sir maximum lot coverage by two percent Would you um, just uh, real quickly go through your, um, do you have your application? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, um, you know, uh, I, I, uh, number one, I mean, I, I'm going to just do these very quickly. Extraordinary exceptional conditions um, apply. Um, uh, you don't intend to exceed the limit, but you're doing, you're asking for a 2% variance uh, to do so. I believe that um, uh, you've got a larger lot than, um, and you have plenty of room. So I think that that's, that, that makes perfectly sen good sense. Doesn't generally apply to other properties or structures in the vicinity. I would agree with that with a single story um, uh, lot. Going back is the only way you have to go yes, um, there. Um, and, um, it would unreasonably restrict the utilization of the property. Um, again, uh, with um, that uh, large backyard and your only access for for um, expansion, I think that forms with that. And then um, it would uh, uh, would not be adverse to the the public or additionally explain any other things. So I agree with that. It's not really um, uh, it's conforming to the lines of the house. Um, and shouldn't affect uh, uh, the neighbors. Um, and then it's the minimum necessary, and I think that, um, you know, the 2% um, uh, fudge factors, if you will, um, is probably um, reasonable. Uh, it's certainly the minimum. And I, I believe it would be harmonious and for the purposes of the zoning ordinance and not interest to the neighborhood as well. Um, Thank you. Is there anyone else here speaking in favor or against this application? Any questions from the, the board?
I'd like to uh, make a motion that we approve this special exception um, based on the applicant's testimony. And I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, approve this variance um, uh, based on the uh, applica applicant's testimony, in, um, both written and uh, oral, and um, subject to all stipulations and uh, comments of staff in the application. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. May I say one thing? The staff is fantastic. They've been so helpful for us and amazing. Thank you, everyone. Very good. Thank you. About it. Okay. All right. Item number 11 on the agenda is case 2019-0046. This is for 2200 Hampton Street and 1416 Pine Street. It's a variance to the buffer transition, transition yard for an institutional use. And to give some background on this one, the original application was to provide a fence along the entire buffer. Um, they have since changed that after speaking with um, staff to DDRC as well as adjacent neighbors to where their request is now for a six foot masonry wall along one shared property line that's going to run to um, some existing vegetation and then become the eight foot wall so instead of the or the eight foot fence so instead of a fence all the way around it's masonry wall and then fence. The applicant is welcome to proceed. Good morning. My name is Dr. Flavia Eldermeyer and I'm the historian on the project. Um, we've been in, Allen University has been in the community for almost 150 years. This particular property has been vacant for about 15 years and has been over the years in decline. Our goal is to restore the project and also to add an addendum to the site. We have can I, some, can I pass these yes, to sure. We've had an opportunity over the past couple of months to meet with community members, to share our plans for the site. It will be a mixed use site in that the building, the, his, the historic portion of the building will remain, we're gonna try to keep as much of the historic um, interior and exterior as possible without any uh, just major improvements as, as needed. It will house an edu education center on the lower level. Uh, we just received approval to re open our education, um, offer an education major at the university. We have a donor who's willing to have the school named in their honor uh, for that portion. On the first floor, we'll have a wall for the historic Waverly community, and that will recognize those doctors and nurses who were a part of this hospital when it was Good Samaritan Hospital. We'll also create our Palmetto Hall of Fame to recognize prominent African Americans throughout the state and it would be housed there as well. The new addition on the first floor would include a 200 seat auditorium and I will definitely let the construction gentleman, uh, Mr. Barnett, explain more about that. But that will be named after the Emanuel Nine in recognition of their um, the tragedy that happened, but also to bring around civility. That would be uh, a facility that will host world-renowned debate. It's not going to be used every single day. It's going to be uh, staffed with high tech uh, so that conferences could happen across the country. The building itself has national, federal, and city historic uh, recognition. And so we are trying to improve our community, improve the university, but also keep the historic relevance of the site. I'm going to defer now to our construction engineer from GMK. Hey, I'm Hoyt Burnett with Land Plan Group, part of the GMK uh, design team. Um, as you know, when you've got an existing building, you can't move it. And so um, we're stuck with where the existing placement of the building is, and so we don't meet certain distance requirements from the property line. Um, and so that's basically what this variance is for. Um, we are going to change and do the masonry wall uh, along Mrs. Bruce's property line uh, and then convert that once we get into a, a thicker uh, existing wooded area to a, um, an eight foot tall wooden fence, which will then come around the side uh, to Pine Street and then um, end at the, at the house. 
Uh, and I think one of the variance exceptions that we've got is there's a, there's a very thick wooded area in, in the corner, um, which would be, I guess, the upper right corner on that screenshot there. Um, and, and we feel that that's uh, it's almost an opaque barrier. And so why take it out to replant if it's already doing its purpose at this point? Um, and so I wonder if you've got any other questions. We've got uh, GMK here as well to talk about the building if you want to discuss anything building. We've also got other representatives from Allen. We have other questions. So um, just a quick uh, confirmation, Rachel. I'm looking at the, um, the aerial site plan um, that shows the addition of the one-story lecture studio. And I see where it's been redlined, where um, six-foot masonry wall will be installed. Is that the wall we're talking about? I was me marking up their existing site <laughs> So sorry, it's a little rough. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that masterpiece. Yeah. Um, yes, the masonry right. wall will run for the majority of the um, shared <coughs> property line um, for the first lot on the shared property line, starting kind of at the front corner of the building. That'll be the brick wall. And then where that existing vegetation is marked out is where it'll move into the into a eight foot wooden fence to come along down on the Pine Street side for that shared residential buffer. Right, got it. And, and just so you know, the wooden fence was a recommendation by city uh, to kind of keep with the neighborhood feel. Uh, so that was what we kind of talked about in our meeting today. So. Yes, staff to DDRC has been involved in some recommendations on this one as well, um, specifically with the masonry law. So, because they will review the building plans and the wall and fence at the DRC meeting as well. Okay. And, and the president's prepared to do what's necessary to move, keep the project moving forward. It's an $11 million project at this point uh, with an 18-month completion for spring 2021. We've already begun to uh, secure funding for various investors who are in grants um, to help us raise that $11 million. Right. Um, is there um, anyone um, here in the audience to speak in favor or against this application? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Would you please approach the podium? Would you please approach the, the podium? I beg you, I'm, I apologize. Okay, I'm Catherine Bruce. I live at 2214 Hampton Street, which is right next to the historic Waverly Building that we're speaking about. So I just wanted to verify that we have had lots of good conversations with Alan, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to the doctor, I've met with Dr. McNeely, I have also um, been a part of neighborhood meetings, so we have very good communication, and uh, I was made aware of the, the change to add the masonry wall. Uh, I think between a commercial and residential, it's typically eight feet, um, so I don't know, I see it six feet there, but you know, typically it's eight feet. But we're, we're glad to have the brick wall there and also glad to have the trees there for the privacy element. So just wanted to, to put that in there. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. And that's, just to uh, clarify, um, the way it is in the landscaping ordinance is a six foot masonry wall and eight foot wooden fence. So I think there was some confusion with the six and eight feet there. Gotcha. What's the, um, so it's a, a eight foot wall is permitted outright in the city of Columbia? A fence, I mean. Um, if it's part of a landscaping buffer, you can go up to eight feet with a wooden fence. It serves as that buffer. On its own, it would require <laughs> There was an existing eight foot fence along that property line too, so we felt like we should match that. Morning. Stephen Larkin, I'm in Waverly neighborhood. Yes, sir. Used to be right there in the neighborhood. Uh, we're born in the hospital. Uh, and I live at 14, 12. Right? So, uh, 
my concern uh, with the park. Uh, we, does this have anything to do with, with, with the uh, residential park? I'm not, I'm not this is a variance for a, um, uh, trans, a buffer transition yard. That's the next one. That's the next piece. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm in 1412 plan. I don't have any problem with their application. She just informed me that they're not going to change that that house that is. Um, it's at 1416. Right. That, that, that's that, going to remain there? Right. So those, right, that's going to remain. And mm -hmm. the people who are in that house right now is the uh, Dickinson Green Seminary will move right. into that building. Do you all mind room. coming a little bit closer to the microphone? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His concern was the house that we own next door to his property or no, on the street, on, house, yeah. two doors down from Pine Street. See, where that, blue that house will spot. remain in place, intact, mm -hmm. and there currently is used right now as the Dickinson Green Theological Seminary. Right. Those offices will be moved into the building once the building is completed, and they will reside on the second floor of the building. The house is going to stay there like Yes, the house is, yes, it's going to stay. Not, they're, not, they're not doing anything. No, we're not going to tear it down. No, it's right. going to remain. It'll just be a okay, different well, office. Yes. I'm all for it. Yes. Thank you so much. Good yes. to meet you. I'm Steve. You can hear me clearly. Yes. I can barely Very clearly. Hear you. Thank you and so the much. Next, and the next Listen. component is around parking. So once we finish this, we'll move to parking. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, thank you for your written application. It's very thorough, um, and I think the presentation um, is, uh, explains it. So I think we're any uh, any questions or comments from the board. It's a very good project. You've done a very good job. I think the lecture uh, studio edition will be a benefit to the university and to the community. Yes. I think the presence of the natural buffer back there with the trees on the back side of the site does yes. help alleviate the the landscape buffer requirement, in, in essence, you have it, it may not be as wise as it needs to be, but uh, Mr. Burnett's testimony regarding the uh, presence of the existing structure that you really can't move them around and center them in the site, such as a um, newer vacant site and meet all the current land development regulations is um, absolutely true. So um, I think we've done a very good job with this. It, we've, we've seen a lot of projects in Waverly that come in front of this board and when there's a big problem with the neighborhood, they, they are always here, vocally speaking, yes. uh, their opposition for it. So um, without that, very good site planning, and a very good thing for the university community, I would absolutely be in favor of it. Well, and, and our president had a duplicate meeting this morning, or he would have come, but I, I am pretty familiar with the project, and I've been working with him from the inception, and I helped write some of those documents, so yes. Well, Thank you did a fine absolutely. presentation, so just okay. tell him know that. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we approve this uh, request for a variance buffer transition yard um, uh, based on uh, the applicant's uh, uh, oral testimony and written application. I believe that they have proven uh, that they meet the criteria uh, for a variance um, subject to all comments uh, by staff um, in the application. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The um, final item on the agenda involves the same properties. It's case 2019-0047 for 2200 Hampton Street and 1416 Pine Street. It's a variance to the off-street parking requirement for an institutional use. Applicants right here. Yes, ma'am. Did I say it all over again? Okay, so I have the chief of police, <laughs> and he is <laughs> responsible for the planning uh, for the um, parking on campus. So I'll let him speak. This is our chief of police, Chief Calvin Davis. Thanks, Chief. Come on. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for your time. Uh, first, uh, I think it would be uh, best interest to say that all of our parking associated with the university is decal driven. It means that every faculty and staff and student has to have a parking decal. Now, if you look at your, I think it may have it listed the parking in terms of locations. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Waverly Hospital listed 28 possible parking spaces. And there's also uh, uh, parking spaces that is broken down to where the people can park. So I give you a typical example. Students generally park at the campus mall uh, based on the decals. And when they park on street, it doesn't have any reflection on what we do as an institution. It's that they get a ticket, they get a ticket. So. In that arena, uh, 
faculty and staff park on main campus. So this would be centered around a visitors, faculty, staff, and students. Of course, the visitors would have a temporary decal and they can park there. So uh, based on the way it's laid out, it's a small campus, 10 acres. Uh, you know, it's geographically kind of uh, public streets run through the university, Hampton Street, Pine Street, Oak Street. We don't think that's going to change. So I think it helps out sometimes more than it, it hurts. So uh, we have 28 parking spaces dedicated to that spot, and uh, the students know where they can and can't park. So we do a lot of ticketing through the city of Columbia, through the city managers. We write city of Columbia parking tickets, and we also, as a control mechanism, and we also uh, tow very heavily when it relates to people violation, violating parking on campus. So that's where we are right now. The total number of parking spaces in that particular area for the entire Cal campus is broken down and in, in various. Um, uh, the dormitory itself, 27 total parking spaces, uh, two handicapped possible, three additional, and six in the Waverly Hospital, 28. And it's different scenarios for different ones based on the layout uh, that the uh, civil engineer has to perform. Uh, 